Hi everyone, this is Jenny Lyles. Welcome to Out of My Mind. Today we're going to take on a topic called 10 Reasons Why You Should Pause Before Disciplining Your Child. A pause before disciplining your child is not something we usually think of. When somebody has done something wrong, our child has done something wrong, we have this tendency to get really caught up in the moment and to immediately think up consequences and punishments and, you know, immediately act, immediately start yelling, immediately reach for a paddle or start spanking. And these sorts of things can get us in trouble both short term and long term in terms of how well we're parenting our child. So my first point, before I even get into the 10 reasons why, is to point out that pausing is an option. And it is something that is a really good option in most cases. Now, obviously, if your child is doing something that is immediately dangerous to them, you stop them from doing that behavior. But that doesn't mean that you have to immediately, upon finding out that your child is doing something dangerous, come up with the consequence of that thing. For the purposes of this particular vi video, we're going to pretend that you have a child who's somewhere between the ages of about eight and about 13. And they were using your phone. And while they were using your phone, your child went on to a website that you find either dangerous or unacceptable according to your family's code of ethics, whatever that might be. And you have got to deal with this problem. So that is the example we're using through this and I have purposely not mentioned and not uh, lined up what was the nature of that particular website because that's going to be different from family to family. There are going to be different things that are acceptable and unacceptable for various families. So we're just going to start out with your child who is somewhere between roughly 8 and 13 has gone to a website on your phone that you find unacceptable, okay? Now, the first thing a pause allows you to do is a pause allows you to take the time to manage your own emotions in the situation. You are likely to have both significant anger and worry in a situation where your child has broken significant family rules or has done something that is potentially dangerous to, to the child or to the family or to something. So during this pause, this is a good time to process those emotions so you can kind of sort out how much of this is directly attributable to what your child is doing right now and how much of it is worry about the future and anger about a past pattern that might not even be your child's. It might be that you're afraid that there's an echo of your own behavior or another parent's behavior or some other pattern that you're afraid of. So pay attention to how much of your emotion in the moment when you find out your child has done something unacceptable, like going to a website that is dangerous or not okay for your family, um, how much of that is a reaction to fears of your child repeating patterns in your family or patterns in the family of somebody else in their life? Okay. The second reason why pausing is a good idea is because when you pause before discipline, you have a chance to review your own actions in a situation and decide whether maybe you need to change your own behavior instead of or in addition to working on helping the child change their behavior. What in your behavior may have led to their behavior or made their behavior worse? Now, in the case of a child using your phone inappropriately, here's a couple questions to ask yourself. For instance, 
Have you been letting your child use your phone even when you didn't want them to because it was easier, because it was a way to keep them quiet, keep them out of your hair? Were you kind of using the phone as a babysitter? Another question you might ask yourself is, is the website your child going to an attempt to answer a question they've been asking you that you haven't been answering them? Say perhaps your child is eight or nine or 10 years old and they've been asking you some things about relationships or sex and you've just found them going to a website that is porn and you're horrified. Um, it's possible that they weren't going to this website about porn for purient means, reasons, but instead were going there in order to try to get the information you weren't willing to give them that they were asking for and that was probably developmentally appropriate for them because you would have been able to better model what was developmentally appropriate them than a porn site. Are they imitating you in some way? Are they going to a website where, say, people are saying horrible things about other people because they've heard those kinds of things from you or from another parent? Um, do you need to perhaps not encourage them to tease and bully other people? Have you been ignoring or perhaps weren't aware of a need of theirs. Perhaps they've gone out on a website to figure out how to do something they really wanted to learn how to do. And this is something that you could have helped them with, but you had no idea that this is something they were curious about or interested in. And now that you know that this is an interest of theirs, you can steer them towards more age appropriate or development appropriate ways of meeting that need. Again, this is often a porn site, but there are other kind of places where a child might wander into that might not be healthy for them. I wouldn't want a child in most areas of Reddit, for example. Um, another example in terms of dangerous things a child could get into online on your phone is they might wander into a place where a lot of sexual predators hang out that is ostensibly a child's site but that has a reputation for adults seeking to form inappropriate relationships with children. Now pausing, the third reason you should pause, is because pausing allows you to take the time to contemplate what needs was your child's behavior trying to fill and help them find ways to fill that need that don't involve disrupting the family, endangering themselves, or simply breaking family rules. Like perhaps your child was looking for something funny. They wanted something just hilarious and funny because they have this need to kind of look at the world sideways and find the jokes and things. And they found themselves on a horribly raunchy website where there was some really inappropriate stuff going on in the name of humor, right? Now, they have this need for funniness, and that can be a need. Yes, there are some people who need to be the class clown. It's how they cope with things. So you might lead them to a website full of dad jokes, or you might find you know, a website with a comedian that has a reputation for being uh, funny but not raunchy, like say, you know, let's look for an old example, like Carol Burnett, or like several other people who are not known for raunchy humor. Pausing on the fourth piece of this allows both you and your child to become calmer by the time it's time to talk about the thing. Whatever the thing was, it doesn't have to be that your child got caught on your phone. It could be all kinds of things. It could be something they did, something they didn't do, uh, like clean their room. So you're going to be having to have a serious discussion about a behavior that was unacceptable in some way. 
And if you pause, if you say, hey, kiddo, go to school, go to your room, um, go do something in another part of the house, and we'll discuss this later, you're giving yourself time to breathe. You're giving yourself time to process those emotions and then come from a calmer place when you decide what the consequence for that behavior so, is. A couple of things happen if you calm down and give the child a chance to calm down before you go to the point where you're going to discuss what the consequences of their behavior is. Uh, the first thing is you give an, op an opportunity for your child to learn how to get their emotions under control. And then you get the opportunity to say, hey, good job, kiddo. I'm really glad you were able to calm yourself down. I know we were both really angry and upset earlier today. And you've done a really good job of coming to me as when I've called you to deal with this and you're handling it really well. I'm proud of you. That kind of thing is gold in a child's life, folks. It makes all the difference in the world. When they hear a parent saying, great, it's wonderful that you're behaving yourself, they're gonna wanna do it more. We usually give more attention to negative behavior than positive behavior. And unfortunately, because that's the case, we often encourage negative behavior because people need praise and they need attention and if they can't get praise they'll take attention even negative attention you also are providing an opportunity to model being calm in these situations you are showing your child that hey it can be a difficult time, but look at me. See how calm I am. This is a good way to handle these particular sorts of situations. And your child will learn a little something that you're not necessarily teaching in the lesson, but that it's very useful for them to learn. A pause, number five reason to pause while you are talking with your child about something they've done that needs to be corrected. A pause allows you to think up a consequence that deals with the issue by teaching the child the skills they need or by setting expectations rather than by quote unquote punishing. And um, the reason for this is because punishing isn't as effective as giving your child skills that they're going to need to keep from doing this thing in the future or help them do the thing you wanted them to do in the future. So it allows you time that teaches while ending the behavior. So you might say something like, well, kiddo, it looks like you went on this site because you wanted to know about this particular kind of thing. Well, I'm not sure that going to this site was a good idea because there are dangerous people who hang out there and this site might be a little more than you can handle at your life stage right now. But you know, that particular interest isn't necessarily bad. So how about you come to me next time and we can go on a website together and see what we can find about this sort of thing. You know, like say this kid was finding raunchy humor. And you can say, let's see what we can find that isn't raunchy. Let's look at some, uh, philosophy of humor. Let's look at some of the other things we can do. And oh, by the way, for right now, you can't use my phone unless I'm sitting right next to you. And that's probably going to last for a week or two. Now I can help you come up with other things to do. And if you ask me enough during the day, the other things that you're going to be asked to do if you're looking at me and telling me you're bored are things like cleaning the kitchen or sweeping the uh, living room floor, or maybe going out and helping me garden. Because, you know, if you're bored, obviously you're not having enough things to do. So I'm gonna teach you some things that'll help you when you're a little older. The sixth reason that pausing is helpful is that it allows you to get all of the co-parents involved in a child's life all on the same page. And this is crucially important. It doesn't matter whether your co-parent is a spouse, a formal spou former spouse, 
um, the parent um, that is not in the household that was never a spouse, a step parent, um, a boyfriend or girlfriend, a friend, a grandparent, even a significantly older sibling. It really doesn't matter who this co-parent is. The point is that this person has some role in helping you discipline your child. And it's important for all of you who, are, who have a role in disciplining this child to come to some level of agreement on how issues like this should be handled. So you might call together your one or two other co-parents and say, hey, Junior did this thing today, and this is how I think I should handle it. What do you think? And you'll get some feedback, and you may not agree with all the feedback, but you'll usually be able to come to some sort of compromise before going back to your kiddo and say, okay, well, I talked to so-and-so and so-and-so, -and -so, these important people in your lives, and we've all agreed that because you did this thing, this is going to be the consequence. And as soon as you and I are done talking, I'm going to go back to so-and-so and so-and-so -and, -so and let them know that this is the final decision we made. And you, one of the reasons you do this is to prevent something called triangulating. And it's called triangulating because there's usually at least three people involved. So you've got your child and you and another co-parent and your child might go to you and say, hey, parent, I really, really want to do X, Y, Z. And you're like, no, kiddo, you can't do X, Y, Z because A, B, C, right? So this kiddo then goes to the other co-parent um, after getting the no from you and says, hey, co-parent, I want to do X, Y, Z. And because you were really smart and you've already contacted co-parent, they're not going to say, okay, go ahead and do X, Y, Z. Um, they're going to instead say, you know, other co-parent and I discussed this and we're not going to be allowing you to do X, Y, Z because A, B, C. So sorry, kiddo, would you like some ideas and some other things that you could do? Because we're not about punishing, we're about teaching because punishing doesn't teach you to be a better adult. And what we're trying to do is raise healthy, happy adults who are productive in some way or another in their lives, right? Now, a seventh reason why you might want to pause before disciplining your child is that a pause allows the child to think about what happened and maybe realize important things about their own behavior. Like, let's say your kiddo went on that website that you don't approve of, and they did it deliberately. And they did it because they were angry at you because they're feeling like they're big kids. But then they got to that website, and they realized it wasn't all that in a bag of chips, and they don't really want to be at that website anymore. And they're really kind of glad you stepped in and stopped it. They might actually thank you. They might actually volunteer their own discipline. They might voluntarily change their own behavior based on the time that they spent thinking where you weren't pushing or yelling or disciplining. You were just giving them a little time to think while you thought. Now, I know some of you are going, oh, that never happens, but it absolutely does happen. There were several times with both my sons, Mr. Easy to Raise Son and Mr. Oh My God, You Can't Believe How Hard He Was to Raise Son would come to me after I'd kind of thought about something or their father had kind of thought about something. And they said, you know what? You're right. I probably shouldn't have done that. Next time I'll go to you. I think that maybe I need to clean the kitchen for a week. Now, this was when they were a little older, so cleaning the kitchen. But I did have my oldest son run out to me one time after breaking a window and confess immediately and literally yell at me, punish me, punish me, punish me. I was such a bad kid. Of course, we didn't punish him because the circumstances were pretty um, okay in terms of what he did. But we did spend some time helping him figure out what to do in that circumstance that resolved pretty well after that. And he's turned out to be a pretty decent, kind, compassionate, productive man. Now, the eighth reason why you might want to pause is because it minimizes the chances of you 
overreacting out of the emotions of the moment. This will prevent you from committing physical or emotional abuse. And it will also prevent you from simply setting a discipline that is too harsh or setting a discipline you won't be able to follow through on. One of the big mistakes a lot of parents make is to rely an awful lot on grounding. And when I say grounding, I mean that whole, you are going to be in your room forever and ever and ever, amen. You can do nothing. Um, and when you do that, you become a jailer, which puts you into grounding too. And therefore, you usually find a way to let your kid out of it way earlier than you told them to. So they learn to figure out that when they're grounded, it's never as bad as you tell them it's going to be. And they're just going to wait you out and go back to what they were doing because the consequence that you promised them is not the consequence you followed through on. Now, you don't want to overreact because spanking and yelling don't actually change behavior other than in the very short term. And they teach your child anger. They teach your child violence. And those are things you don't want your child to have as a core part of who they are. So while you're taking that pause, you're going to think about what's a consequence that I can live with enforcing that isn't going to damage my child in some way and that is going to help them learn to become a happy, kind, compassionate adult. Sometimes the consequence is simply the discussion you're having. Quite frankly, sometimes that's enough because the child was looking for a way to deal with some big emotions or to deal with a problem and the conversation itself solves the problem. Sometimes there really needs to be some sort of consequence that uh, teaches something new and stops the behavior. But you have to make sure that that consequence is something you can live with that is helpful in the situation. The ninth reason you might want to pause before disciplining your child is that a pause allows you time to research ideas on how to handle the issue. Now, let's say your child's done something that you just are gobsmacked about. You have no idea why your child did this absolutely ridiculous off the wall thing. And you don't even understand this thing because you know the world's gone by since you were a teenager or, or a child. And you're not even really familiar with the technology, let alone the mindset that caused your child to do this thing, right? So this gives you time to call somebody and say, hey, can you tell me about this particular thing and why my child would have done this thing? And that person might be able to give you an answer. You might be able to call a teacher at the school and say, hey, my child did this thing and I think it's related to something going on at school. Is there anything you know that might be leading to this? Or you might call your child's pediatrician or a therapist that your family has a relationship with, either yours or your child or their family therapist, or consulting an online authority, like a reputable parenting magazine or an online doctor or therapist or somebody like that who has articles on the issue that you're looking at or even YouTube videos like this one. Okay, so that gives you a little time to research how you're going to handle this sort of thing. And that gives you a place so when you go into this conversation with your child about what happened, you have a little bit of authority and knowledge that really helps you get through this a little more easily. Finally, the tenth reason why you want to pause after uh, your child has done something that is unacceptable in your household before you deal out the consequence is that you may want to recharge your energy that you may have spent dealing with the initial discovery. When your child does something that is embarrassing to you or that is not what you want them to be as an adult or is somehow angering or worrisome, that saps your energy. And 
before you deal with your child, you're going to want to recharge. You're maybe going to sit down and relax for a minute. You maybe take a nap if you have that kind of luxury in your life. You may want to talk to a friend. Uh, you may want to do just anything you want to do that'll calm you down, rebuild your energy, and give you a little more time to be able to go to your child and say, okay, now that I'm calm, now that I've kind of rested a bit, this is what I've come up with. Now, I didn't give you a lot of specific things to do at the end point after the pause today, and there's a reason for that. So you're going to wa probably want to spend a little more time thinking up various kinds of consequences that work for your family. Go ahead and research online, uh, talk to friends, find out what experts say is effective, and come up with something that works for your family and your preferences. I really thank you for listening to what I've had to say today. And if you want more stuff like this on parenting, on mental health, on depression, on how we can interface with the world we live in and make it a better place, please go to www.oomm.live to see more videos and more articles and even some SoundCloud podcasts on this issue, as well as some memes that you can share around to make your friends giggle a little and maybe make them learn a little something or get inspired. And if you want to support my work, I do have a Patreon, and it is patreon.com backslash J-L-I-L-E-S, and my Patreon community is designed to help you get more help than just a video that can provide. So please check out the various levels of support to see if one of those will help you get more help that you will need on a regular basis. Thank you, and I hope to talk to you soon. Be sure to subscribe to my videos, like them, and share them around so that you can help other people in the same place where you are right now. I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.